Yo, what's going on, homies? It's your boy Stumped back from the OPTC video, and in today's video, we're continuing on with our tier list, our free to play tier list for you newer mid game and even end game players that are looking to see what to either farm or purchase next. And in today's video, we're focusing on the Pirate King Adventures Adventure Ticket Shop. So, with Pirate King Adventures that goes live literally in about an hour's time of this video going live, um, there will be a shop that allows you to attain a bunch of older characters that are really no longer farmable. Stuff like old point farming events, stuff like ambush characters, and stuff like the uh, free-to-play straw hats will be available in this particular shop. And everything moving forward from this particular uh, Pirate King Adventures, all the free-to-play characters that we can attain, I do imagine, will turn up in this particular shop. So, in today's video, we're going to put them on a tier list. Shout out to Shiro for building the tier list. Big thank you to you. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, but like button, hit the subscribe button, do all that good stuff for me. We've been uploading OPTC videos every single day. Anniversary, super hype time. Um, if you're a new player, welcome to the community. Join the Discord, do all that fun stuff as well. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. And with that said, let's take a look at the Pirate King Adventure Shop. All right, so Shiro's put together some tiers. Must buy great units, good units, bad units. Do not buy. So we're going to start straight up in do not buy. So these particular characters here are all farmable, as I'm aware. All of these Psy Straw Hats, you can actually get from Extra Islands, and you can actually pick them up very simply by doing the Straw Hat mission. So if you head over to Event Islands, recruit the Straw Hat Pirates, um, and click on the two-star difficulty, you can pick up um, Zoro, Sanji, Robin, Brook, and I imagine you can also get um, the, what's it called? The Nami, the Usopp, the Frankie as well. I, I do imagine they're all there. The only one that I know isn't there is, and put Zoro there too, uh, is this Luffy. Uh, that's the only one that I'm 100% certain that is, like, is definitely not there. So, um, these particular characters do not buy. If I'm wrong on that, like, in that regard, like, like, please let me know in the comment section below. Um, I, I'd love to correct this. I'll pin the comment and do all that good, that good stuff there. So, um, this is, uh, like, way past editing stump, and some things happened after uploading this video. Uh, it, it came to my attention that I was wrong, and not all the Straw Hats are farmable. Only the Brook, the Robin, the Zoro, and the Sanji are all farmable. They're the only characters that you can farm, so they're the only ones that you do not want to buy. As for the other four, I would say just leave them there until they get level limit breaks. But, like, of course, they, they, they also got level limit breaks in that time. So, if you are a new player, it falls to the same argument to leave Nami, Usopp, Frankie, and Chopper all where they are. Like, they are all basically in the exact same spot. You don't need to do anything with them because you'll have access to all of these characters. However, 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 however. If you are not a new player, like myself, you don't have all of these characters. Uh, it's a bit of a shame, and I really hope that they give them out, because these characters got absolutely insane with their level limit break. However, if you're an endgame player, you're probably never going to use them, so I would actually not, like, prioritize them. But they are a lot better than the Do Not Buy tier, and you can't get them anywhere but this particular tier list, so... Well, this particular shop. So, we do have to put them on the tier. And we are going to put them up here in, in like, great units. For that re same reason, I'm going to bring um, Jinbei down. The way these characters work, and obviously this is a sneak peek for the final actual, like, snippet. If you guys want to understand why the characters are here, then watch the rest of the video. Um, but, like I said, just like Luffy, if you're a new player, you don't need these characters. So, just, just be mindful of that. Um, however, if you're not a new player, you're definitely going to want to pick them up from this particular shop. So, um, the Usopp can now do two turns of delay as well as five turns of special bind. He has special bind in his kit. Frankie does five turns of damage reduction and defense up and is a 2.25 color affinity boost. Nami can give you a conditional boost against paralysis for two times and paralyze as well as do five turns of paralysis and bind removal. Chopper is now 60% damage reduction. He does 20% resistance to the enemy. Like... These characters do so, so much. They do so much, and they are, are all so freaking good. However, as I mentioned with Luffy and with Jinbei, um, if 
Well, Jinbei is actually a must buy because like everyone needs to buy Jinbei. So I, I, I take that back. I'm going to put him back there. He does 1,000 base stats, by the way. Um, later in the video, I forget what he does. He does 1,000 base stats if you have a Luffy and he does five turns of ship bind at level limit break uh, five. But the only place you can get Jinbei is this particular shop. So like, just be mindful of that. Like I said, I really hope that they bring them for endgame players. As for other characters that you should not buy, this Lin Lin, this Sasaki, this Brook, um, there should be a Jack as well. Where's Jack? This Jack, you definitely do not want to buy these characters. And the reason I say do not buy these characters is because they're all available in the Recollective Archive. If you head over to the Recollective Archive and you click on the Event tab, you can actually pick them up there. So do not buy these characters. You can farm these characters. Um, yes, it's probably a bit more finicky, but saving these uh, green tickets is definitely going to be the play moving forward. As for endgame players and something that's not on this tier list, um, you want to pick up stuff like Super Cola. Super Cola is going to be your best option. So just be mindful that if you're an endgame player, um, but if you are a newer player, or if you missed out on some of these characters, hopefully this tier list is going to help you guys out. Uh, as for Whitebeard, Whitebeard is a he's a bad unit. Like This Whitebeard is so old. I think he just does a HP cut. Nothing of note. So definitely don't buy him. As for other characters on this list that sort of fall into bad characters, um, Shanks or oh, Cavendish. Cavendish is terrible. This, 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 these ambush characters are terrible. You definitely do not want Cavendish. You definitely do not want Whitebeard. Even Shanks, honestly, nowadays, Shanks is a pretty bad unit. Like, I think he's a two times orb boost, and then he like rotates all of some free, free spirit and cerebrals. It's just way better characters that do that. So I definitely wouldn't pick him up. Um, he, he's a he's, he's a pretty bad unit. Uh, looking at these other characters, I don't really think there's any other bad characters on this particular list that I can really think of off the top of my head. Um, yeah, I, I definitely wouldn't say there's any like like other bad characters. But I get, look, I guess we'll, we'll 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 touch on that when we actually get there. So I just ran the um, the straw hat mission, and I picked up a yeah Sanji's there, Brooks there, so. You can definitely farm these particular characters. So, like, they're, they're all definitely there. Definitely do not pick them up. Um, let's sort of go through the list now because I have to try and, like, rejog my memory what these characters do. Um, this Garp... This Garp is a good unit. Nowadays, you don't really need what this Garp does. He insta-kills if you're, like, the enemy's below 30% HP. He, once upon a time, was a great unit. But nowadays, like, he, he's just good. I couldn't tell you last time I used this Garp ability. Um, but, like, he's unique. So, when you need him, pick him up. But, like... Until then, you don't need him. As for Sengoku, Sengoku is just a good unit. Um, nothing too crazy with Sengoku. Uh, he can be a orb booster for three turns, provided you have uh, three or four of the same type orb, and then he makes that orb matching. So the enemy gives you like a full body quick orbs, you can use his special, and then you can sort of do some shenanigans there. But otherwise, you're probably never going to use the unit. As for Lin Lin, this Lin Lin is a must buy. This ambush Lin Lin is so good. She removes 6 turns of attack down, 6 turns of bind, 6 turns of despair. She gives you an attack boost when you're over a 12 combo hit for Driven and Powerhouse. And she rotates adjacent orbs into recovery. Fantastic unit. Like, a, a fantastic... Easily the best ambush character, and it's not even close. Um, there's Lin Lin, and then there's everyone else. So just be mindful of that. Next, we've got Luffy. Now, if you're an endgame player, this Luffy is a must-buy. Because you can't get the 10 copies to level limit break this particular character. You just, you just can't. If you're a newer player, do not buy this unit because you don't need him. You get, you get the 10 copies off rip. So this one's an interesting one because for end game players, you want this character unless you've used posters. For me, I just use posters because I'm, I'd rather use posters than waste these, waste these tickets. Um, but he is such a phenomenal, phenomenal unit, like a phenomenal character. For end game players though, you don't really need the five plus Luffy as good as he is. Um, so honestly, he's just kind of a great unit for endgame players. Like, you just put, sort of put him there. Um, and for endgame players, you probably have this Lin Lin as well. She's, a, she's, she's, um, she's been around for a while. But for new players, like, this is a do not buy. Like, it's unfortunate, but it's a do not buy. So it depends on what type of player you are. Um, is dependent on where he goes. Fantastic, fantastic unit. Like, a phenomenal, phenomenal free-to-play character. The best free-to-play character in the game. The 5 plus level of Maria 5 character. But as for um, new players, you're not going to need him. I'm going to stick him up here because, like, he's exclusive to this shop, which makes him so valuable, just like Lin Lin. Um, but other than that, like, it sort of just depends on where you sit. 
This Egg Strike is a great unit. I am a big fan of this Egg Strike. He gives, uh, he's on a six turn cooldown and gives Strikers and Powerhouse, or no, Striker and Driven characters cooldown. And he also does damage, so you can kill units. I use this guy to speed farm, which is like his big upside, because you can just get two turns of cooldown with double special activation, and it's very easy to get his special back because he's a Driven character, and you can use the Mr. 3 support. So moving on to the next character, we've got Cracker. Cracker is a good unit, but a unit that you're not going to use that often. Um, honestly, I've never used this Cracker since his release, but that's not saying that he's bad. He changes slots, including block, into strength, and then boosts the normal attacks of powers driven by one turn, reduces defense, damage reduction, and threshold by two turns, and then if you have a um, color affinity, he does an extra three turns of damage reduction and threshold, plus he has double special activation. So... Very interesting character. Um, you are going to have to pick up multiple copies to get the real value out of him. So for that reason, I think he's just a good unit. Um, I wouldn't put him any any higher because he's not something that I would prioritize from this list. Don Jin Jiao, though. Don Jin Jiao is so good. I don't think Don Jin Jiao gets enough love for what this character actually does. He has utility with Special Blind, which is the big use. And he can remove paralysis by five turns while also changing block orbs. He reduces damage taken by 60%, and um, that's going to be great moving forward when more characters get that Yamato conversion um, damage reduction to attack. Plus, he gives you a 0.7 chain boost, and after one turn, he gives you a 0.9 chain boost. So, very, very good character. He's a fighter powerhouse character. He works great on quick powerhouse teams, um, namely under Versa Kainu. He, he's a great unit, and um, for that utility, the combination of special one and paralysis is so prevalent as well. So, um, definitely pick him up. As for Garp, Garp for me is a must-buy. Um, Garp is on every single one of my speed farming teams, and he is a fantastic and phenomenal character for Grand Voyage, level 5 at Alvita's Hideout. Uh, he's, he's, a, he's a demon. He can remove barriers, and he gives cooldowns to both fighters and striker characters. And as you guys know, strikers are crazy at the moment. He was one turn of barrier, gives you one turn of cooldown, and changes the left column to strength. And if your captain just has an int slot, he also increases the chain multiplier uh, chain multiplier lock by 0.3. You never see that last part, but the cooldowns and the barrier removal is so good on a seven turn cooldown. He also has double special activation, just like uh, Drake. So um, running him and this Drake on striker teams, you just get like so much goddamn cooldown. As for the Sengoku that came out alongside him, Sengoku is just a he's just he's just a great unit. Uh, he removes damage reduction by five turns, and he can give that chain boundary that Garp can do because he actually makes um, the right hand column into int. So the idea with this character is you wanted to use the Sengoku special to get the in orbs on one side, um, but you needed strength orbs on the other side. So they kind of, they're kind of wonky in the sense that you have to use one before the other, and then you miss out on something depending on what you're using. But he does remove damage reduction. He's a cerebral, and he makes cruise type orbs have matching slot effects for one turn. He also heals. Plus, this character is actually phenomenal. I so say he's a fighter striker, not a cerebral. Uh, he's phenomenal on uh, PvP defensive teams. So if you're looking for like a real baity defensive team, particular character is actually really really good for in teams as for this um orochi's is it onu Ibashu? i can't say it on paper they're a bad unit um they don't do too much they have a very good support but their special is so lackluster two turns of bind despair attack down special bind burn removal and that's literally it on a five turn took cooldown and it is what it is as for their support, though, they do go on Orochi, and they remove one turn of Bind, Despair, and Attack down whenever you're inflicted with it. So that support is really, really good. So if you ever need the support, like, this unit is like a must-buy, but, like, Orochi kind of only has one good unit at the moment that I can think of off the top of my hand being the Legend Orochi from the PvP banner, which is super exclusive. So, like, this unit's bad. Like, don't pick them up. Like, just wait. They're driven Free Spirit, though, which is a really interesting combination. Next, we've got Kaido, the uh, Blitz Kaido. This unit is actually super interesting because they are the first free-to-play character off the top of my dome that has a final tap and a super tap. They remove burn and despair by three turns, 300 times their attack and strength damage to all enemies, removes positive effects on the crew, changes all orbs and clean blocks to strength, and then boosts driven characters attack by 2.25. Um, their final tap just gives base stats, so you don't have to worry about that. But their super type reduces strength characters cooldown by one turn and changes all slots to strength. This unit, honestly, is bad. This unit's bad. Like, uh, you, you, don't, you don't need this unit. Like, this unit's bad. And you need so many copies to max them out, so that, this unit's bad. Don't worry about that unit. Next, we've got, um, I think this was a point farming category. Uh, I can't remember exactly where this category came from. I want to say this category is a point farming event, and he's a powerhouse striker, so he's actually pretty good. He's a, he's a pretty good character. Um, he makes powerhouse 
and striker characters type slot type slots have matched a slot effects for two turns and if you have four or more enemies present uh he delays all enemies for two turns honestly he's bad that's bad i thought he was good like he's bad that's a bad special category like, why do you why do you just do that oh is that because i'm reading the wrong category i'm reading the wrong category good job some he this fighter and powerhouse characters special charge by one turn reduces paralysis and defense up by five turns and locks orbs yeah i remember now you're a good unit yeah, I, I thought so. I, I thought so. Sorry, Todd. Um, category's good. Uh, I remember using him um, for, I think it was a point farming event, because the paralysis and the defense up removal was really good. Plus, the cooldown's nice. He has that ability to give himself special reverse by one turn as well. So, he's a good unit. I wouldn't rave on about him too much, but I definitely I definitely will put him in the good category. The Odin. Is this the 5 plus Odin? I'm pretty sure this is the 5 plus Odin. And then you have... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's one good Odin, and then there's one bad Odin. So this Odin has a 5+. Plus. And if I remember correctly, this character you can pick up in the Kazuna shop. So this character reduces all, all the duration of enemies' barriers by 3 turns. Uh, deals 300 times his attack and dex damage. And if your captain is Slasher or Free Spirit, he extends the slot effects by 2 turns. This guy is really good for um, Grand Voyage Shellstown. He's been used a lot there. But if I remember correctly... He's over in the Kazuna shop. Yeah, he's actually over in the Kazuna shop. Honestly, I would not buy him here. I would probably buy him in the Kazuna shop because the Kazuna shop doesn't really have anything that's super exclusive. Um, and I would focus on picking him up there. The barrier removal and stuff like that is actually pretty nice. Um, but as for anything else, like... Yeah, it kind of like is what it is. Plus, you also need to super evolve him to get that effect. Otherwise, it's only two turns of barriers and extends the orbs by one turn. Uh, I wouldn't buy this unit. Uh, this unit's really good, though. Like, he's a really good character. But I feel like picking him up from the Kazuna shop would be more beneficial than picking him up from this shop. But it just depends on what it looks like in terms of the distribution of green tickets compared to Kazuna Insignias. But because he's in another area, I'm going to put him in Do Not Buy. They, all these other characters, you cannot get anywhere else in the game. Like, they're, they're only available in this shop like be mindful of that anything you do not buy is going to be available somewhere else in the game so again like just be mindful of that when you are farming these characters um this killer is a must buy this killer has a fantastic fantastic support that is so freaking valuable if you have um dex kid dex kid at level limit rank five with this guy's support is an absolute demon and the reason i say that is because once you get once Per turn if once per quest if the enemy puts up damage reduction you remove damage reduction by one turn plus if you have a full driven team and he's on your squad then you actually get a 2.25 conditional boost sorry color affinity boost for driven characters you do need a full driven squad but if you do you get a 2.25 color affinity which is huge he also removes damage reduction he also removes burn a very good character and honestly like he, he's a must buy purely for that support going on kid and look it's you it's his kid um, we know he's going to get some more characters moving into the back end of Wano or even some super evolutions down the line. Next, we've got um, X-Drake. This X-Drake is just a great unit. I, I don't like super rate this character, but when I have used this character, he has been wonderful for the teams that I put him on. Here is buy, Burn and Chain Multiply Growth by 5 turns, Locks Orbs and Makes Sight, Int Recovery ten and Tandem have matching slot effects for 3 turns, which is great for avoiding very annoying um, unfavorable orb debuffs. He then boosts the crew's slot effects by 1.75 for one turn. And if your captain is strength or quick, he applies a minus 20% to strength, dex, and quick resistance for all enemies for one turn. This stacks with other resistance, and there's not a lot of other free-to-play characters that can do resistance down. So when he works on a team, he works on a team. He was built for um, the Toby Ropo. Um, but like he, he's just absolutely fantastic. Uh, the damage output you can get with this guy is really, really cool. Even if you don't get the resistance, the, the, the burn removal... The nine-turn cooldown is great as well. Um, he's a he's a very very good character. Next we've got Toki. I think not not Toki is is it Toki or is it Hiori? I think it's Hiori. Um, Hiori came out alongside. Um, no, it is Toki. It's Toki. It's Toki. I was right. Um, came out alongside the Hiori and Ulti. I would have been able to figure that out. I'm a, I'm a spoon. Reduces cooldown by one turn. Attack down by five turns. Type effects by 1.75. And if the captain it has a Wano slot, doubles the crew's attack. Now. This is really good, but uh, you need a one or on the captain to really get the effectiveness. Otherwise, you're looking at just some special uh, special charge and attack down removal, 
um, as well as type like boosting type effects. Um, she has hunger though, which makes her really good, but she's still just a good unit. Um, nothing too flash with this particular character, but if you're looking for a free to play hunger character, she's free spirit cerebral as well. Um, this is a character that you might want to look at farming up or, or, or splashing out on. And with one orbs becoming more and more prevalent, this character will only get better over time. So like, honestly, I kind of want to like put her at the back end. Great units. Uh, I'll leave it here for now, but look, that's subject to change. Next, we've got, um, uh, Uta. Uta is a must buy. If I had to pick one character on this tier list to buy first, this would be the character I'd pick. Like, as an endgame player, this is the character that you pick. Um, even as a mid to early game player, like, uh, sorry, as an endgame player, you might want to pick up this Luffy, but honestly, if you don't have this, this Uta, or have, like, her 5 plus variant, I, I would, I would pick up this Uta, because you can get her skulls over in the Kazuna shop, and you can actually 5 plus this character. When you 5 plus her, she has double special activation, reduce special charge at the start of the quest, and removes two turns of blind, despair, and attack down, boost the chain multiply by 1.1, and sets all enemies' defense to zero. If there is an enemy with defense down status, she then doubles damage to defense down while also reducing another two turns of bind and despair. So you can get six turns of bind and despair, a self proccing conditional booster, as well as a 1.1 times chain boost. Like this, this character is one of the best free to play characters in the entire game. She helps so much in so many different areas of content. And on top of that, she has a really good support that goes on Luffy or Shanks. It just gives a 0.3 chain buff whenever you use their special. Like she's a fantastic character. And I know from my dummy account, my baby account, this is the first character that I'm going to be picking up from this particular shop. From her five star, she does. She's a bit a lot more lackluster. So just make sure you have the insignias to five plus her as well. But once you build up both of those those items, this is a character that honestly that stands here. Like in my eyes, she's she's off the tier list. She's that good. She's on top of the tier list. She's above it. Next, like Garp's really good. I use Garp a lot, and like this Luffy would be great. But like for new players, you got to remember like this Luffy might not even be here. Next, we've got Luffy Whitebeard. I actually really like this Luffy Whitebeard. However, they did come out at a very interesting time. That means you need one of every color to really get all the effectiveness out of them. 10% damage, uh, HP cut. They have three turns of damage reduction, defense up, and threshold. Changes block slots into tandem. And then if every type's on the crew, they're a 2.25 attack and or boost. Otherwise, they're a 1.5 for three turns. This can be a detriment because you don't want the three turns of attack and or boost. For that reason, like, I just can't put them in great units. I, I just can't. Uh, I want to. And they're super close to great units, but like for me, they're just good. Because 99% of the time, you are going to be getting the 1.5 times attack boost for three turns and, and all boost. The block orb manipulation is great. Getting tandem orbs is great for super tandem characters. And then three turns of all the defensive effects is definitely not something that should be underrated as well. It's a white bit, it's a Luffy. It's a fantastic combination there as well. Next, we've got um, Doflamingo. Doflamingo has a very interesting support that goes on Corazon. And I really like this Doflamingo. However, he was designed for Corazon and Law. So if you have Corazon Law, this character is going to be very, very good. He changes all slots randomly into Block and Super, block, super Bomb, which honestly kind of sucks. He then locks those slots for one turn, boosts Driven and Cerebral character slot effects by 2.25 for three turns. And if the Captain is Driven or Cerebral, he reduces Bind, Special Bind by five turns. So if you get all of his conditions... He's very, very good. On top of that, he goes on Corazon as a support, and he removes three turns of bind, and gives a 1.5 times attack boost and orb boost to Driven Cerebrals whenever inflicted by bind. So, very, very good unit, especially if you are running something like Corazon and Law, and you have that ability to not like have your orb swap, so you don't have to worry about the Super Bomb orbs, you don't have to worry about the Block orbs. However, if you run a character like um, Dex Kid, you can still use this in your favor to get super bomb slots or even under a poo is another character that, that uses bomb slots. But if you aren't using that, you're kind of just looking at a good unit. Um, definitely not a bad unit, not like these characters, but you're just sort of looking at a good unit because getting a slot boost for 2.25 for three turns, that's definitely not something to scoff at. And you slap that under Corazon Law, like you are absolutely cooking. Next, we've got this Kaido. Honestly, like, this Kaido, I kind of want to put in bad units. Came out alongside uh, Kdad, which is super interesting because he doesn't help Kdad at all. The Driven Powerhouse that removes Special Bind by 5 turns. Changes character slot to own type and then increases damage taken for 3 times on yourself for 4 turns. But boosts Driven character's attack by 2.5. If your captain is Driven, deals 200 times the character's attack in quick damage to all enemies at the end of the turn. Um, 
if I'm using a special bind remover on a powerhouse team, I'm using Donjin Jow. Like, that's the reason that I just don't like this Kaido. I don't like the fact that you take three times more damage for a 2.5 times attack boost just to Driven. Driven are in a, such a strange spot at the moment. Um, they're just not in that top echelons of amazing characters. Also, they have a lot of attack boosters on Driven that you would just much rather run. Like Legend Queen, Bardo Cavendish come to mind straight away. Um, but you definitely can do some stuff with this character purely for their special bind removal. 99% of the time, I'm literally using this character for their special bind. The end of turn damage is great for getting around resilience, but like other than that, like they kind of got the short end of the stick when it comes to these free to play characters. Because in my opinion, like this guy is like borderline good, but like for me, like I don't think he touches these characters right here. Like, doesn't touch them at all. Next, we have Ulti. Ulti has an ability to do damage based on how much damage you did in the previous turn. I'm pretty sure there's two free play ultis that are both fighter powerhouse strength. So, yeah, 40 times the accumulated damage before the special is launched. Up to 5 million, but then also removes 5 turns of threshold. Changes the top results into own type. Boosts the chain multiplier by 1.0. And then if you get 3 perfects, it's a 1.2 chain multiplier. Ulti's just a good unit. Like... I don't, look, I don't think she's bad, but I don't think, like, I really don't think she's good either, so I think she's really on the cusp here of being a uh, bad unit, but, like, if you want to say she's a good unit, like, she's definitely a good unit too, because Threshold is super, super annoying, uh, and not a lot of other characters on this list do five turns of Threshold. Now that I'm looking at this, I really want to bring Hiyori up. Hiyori is great, cooldowns is awesome, attack down, and one of are pretty easy to get for, the, for like, for the teams that she's on, so I'm going to definitely bring Hiyori up. Um, and as for ulti, I'm going to put her in good units, but she, for me, she, she's borderline on bad units. Next, we've got um, Kid and Law. Kid and Law are another must-buy character. This character is probably the best point farming character we've ever had, if you exclude Uta. Uta was a special point farming um, character, but Kid Law are something else. They do end of turn damage for three turns. They do damage with their special. They give Cerebrals and Striker a buffed uh, multiplier growth rate. So, point up to 0.4 with perfects, 0.3 with greats, 0.2 with good. So they add basically 0.1 every time you hit a perfect or a good or a great. They heal for three turns for 5,000. And then if your captain is Cerebral Striker, they're a chain boundary unit at 2.25 maxing at 10 for three turns. Like this is, this is a fantastic special. And the way they synergize with themselves is so perfect. They're great for treasure map speed farming teams. They're great for uh, wave clearing. They're great for end of turn damage. You're getting around resilience. You also have to have chain shenanigans with this unit. Plus, they're a kid and a law. So, they have so many good supports. Cerebral Strikers are in a very good spot when it comes to classes. So, having your captain be a striker or cerebral is very easy to do. Plus, as a captain, this unit is actually really, really good. So is Uta actually 5 plus and something I didn't touch on. But this character is a captain gives themselves three turns of cooldown. There are four times attack boost. And when you use their, their special, you can remove three turns of despair, just flat rate. So utility captain, free to play, 4.5 times attack when you use their special for dex, cerebral striker. They are very, very good. They're just a phenomenal, phenomenal free to play character. Next, we've got um, Black Maria. Black Maria is, um, she's interesting. She does a color affinity buff, but she also does a bunch of other stuff. The downside to this unit is we just got like a Black Maria that's super cracked. Um, so this unit is actually kind of off off the radar, but she's still very good. Cerebral Striker, she changes type slots to own type, reduces five turns of special binds, damage reduction by five turns, and doubles the type effects of Cerebrals and Strikers for one turn. She's just, she's a good unit. Like, she's just a better version of this ulti when it comes to, like, or not ulti. Who does who did the color affinity? Um, the, maybe it was an ulti. I can't remember. No, it was this Cracker. She's just a better version of this Cracker, if I'm honest. But Cracker does um, Threshold Removal, where she does Damage Reduction Removal. And uh, she also does Special Bind. So, like, rip this Kaido. That's what I mean. Like, this Kaido, it's just other units that I would use on those teams that are just better options than this particular unit. Namely, one and namely two. So, Black Mary is good. Honestly, she's borderline great. She's a borderline great unit. Two times Color Affinity Boost, five times Damage Reduction, five times Threshold, uh, threshold and she can give you Matching Orbs for Cerebrals and Strikers. Partner up with this guy. I I'm going to put her in great unit. She's, she's, she's on the cusp of a great unit. Like I said, the big downside to, uh, to Black Maria is she has to rival that new rare recruit Black Maria. But if you don't have her, like, you, you're, you're cooking. This Odin, this Odin do not buy. Like, actually, no. Like, we'll put him in bad units because he is a bad unit and you can't get him anywhere else. I have never once used this Odin besides, like, a particular event 
where he was completely boosted. And other than that, I've never used him ever again. Two turns of paralysis, two turns of chain multiplier growth. Changes his own slot, including blocking to Wano, which is awesome, but like it's only his own slot. Changes Dex, Slasher, Free Spirits, characters, block slots into tandem, and then boost their base attack by 800. If you've used his special, he adds one turn of paralysis and decreased chain multiplier growth with double special activation. So like, it's like five turns of the paralysis and the chain multiplier growth, and then he gives himself a Wano orb, and then like, the, there's no point into using his other, other special. Like, he's just a bad unit. Like, straight up bad unit. Like, it, it is what it is. Um, next, we got Yamato. Yamato, for me, is a must-buy. She's actually ridiculously good. Oh, look. She, ah, look, I'm going to put her in great units. I changed my mind. Um, the big reason I want to put her in great units is because she only does three turns of the utility. However, she is the only free-to-play Yamato in the game. So that is definitely something to note. But she also gives one turn of cooldown, three turns of binding paralysis removal. She gives you threshold over 80%. Uh, for 80% over 5,000. Sets quick and psi characters chain multiply growth rate at 0.4. So no matter what you hit, if you hit a good or a perfect, it's a 0.4 buff instead of a 0.1 or a 0.3. If you hit a great, it's still, it goes down to 0.1 though, so you really don't want to hit greats. And then after one turn, sets their chain multiply growth rate of normal attacks at 0.5. So if you hit a perfect, it's a 0.5 buff. So very, very good stuff for stage four, carrying into the final stage. She's a free spirit striker, which is like the best combination in the game right now. The downside to her is she has to compete with this particular unit here when it comes to the chain the chain boundary stuff as well. So, good utility, good cooldowns, great unit, but she's just off the cusp of must-buy. If she did five turns of the utility she does, like, she would just be... She'd be something else. The numbers! The numbers are good! The numbers are a good unit, and I don't think the numbers get enough love for what they actually do. I have no idea what they're called, though. Um, you can't just type in numbers in the game, and it comes up. So we're going to have to, like, really search for what this character does. They have an ability just like that bro that brook, this brook here. If you guys watched my um, tier list for um, the event island, where they cut their HP depending on how much HP you have, but they also remove three turns of paralysis, three turns of um, despair, and then delays the enemy by one turn at a 13 turn cooldown. If you land two perfects, they boost the chain multiplier by 1.2. And like I said, if you have over 61% HP, they cut 60% HP and give themselves seven turns of cooldown. Now they do also have a one turn special at seven turns, which gives two turns of paralysis and despair removal, as well as giving um, three perfect strikes, you can get a 1.1 uh, chain multiplier buff. So super, super nice ability to actually have. So you can get five turns of despair and paralysis, you can get around stun, uh, but losing that much HP can be a deficit as well. And that's sort of what drops them out of great units. But like I said, if stun becomes more prevalent, this character will definitely move up because paralysis and despair combination is, is something else. It pops up all of the time. But delaying is a lot of delay immunity in the game. So for that reason, I'm sticking them in good. Finally, we've got Jinbei. Jinbei is going to go into must buy. Jinbei, you can only get one copy of Jinbei, whether you're a new game player or an end game player. Jinbei is only available in this shop. It's the only place that you can get him. But he has a level limit break. Of course he does. He also has a limit break expansion for ship bind, which is super, super valuable. But if we take a look at his um, level limit break, if I can find the goddamn thing... Um, this particular unit gets a drastic buff to his special being base stats when you actually get him level limit break 5. He also can remove um, shipbind with his special, which is very, very valuable. So he's like an ultimate shipbind removal. He makes strength decks and in orbs matching for 3 turns and massively reduces positive damage over 5,000. So he's a, he's, a, he's a very, very good character. Like de Definitely a character that you want to be looking at. Um, especially if you're an endgame player. And for me, besides Super Cola, this is probably the character that I'm going to be looking looking at picking up first. Unfortunately, I just can't bring up his, um, his uh, level limit break. Honestly, it might not be in the game yet, but we, we definitely know he does have a level limit break for that. It's going to wrap up the tier list. Went a little bit longer than I had expected, so I do apologize about that. But if you guys find the video, make sure to go down there, bump the like button, hit the subscribe button. Do all that good stuff. Let me know who you guys will be picking up first on this particular tier list. Remember, do not buy these characters. You can farm them. They're all farmable. They're all available somewhere else in the game. All right, once again, I, I do want to just preface that, like, I did stuff up at the start, and this is what the tier list looks like now. Like, if you're an endgame player, these characters are very, very good. The downside to that is, or, like, if you're a newer player coming to the game and, and you sort of missed out on level limit break, the downside to these characters are that they're only found here, just like everything else, but... If you're a mid to end game player, there's probably better options. Doesn't mean the characters are bad. 
but there are probably better options that, that are going to be very, very powerful. The thing with these characters are, though, they're always boosted in treasure map. So if you're a mid-game player and you're looking for characters that are always boosted, the Straw Hats, this Straw Hat team, they're, they're always boosted. The only ones like that you can farm are these four here. So definitely do not buy them because you can farm them. But as for the rest of them, they do deserve to be higher on the list. And the rest of the characters hopefully it helped you out. I like that it's actually quite symmetrical. It looks quite nice. Like I said, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, do all that good stuff. Most importantly, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, please remember to enjoy the rest of your day. As always, homies, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace!